<laughs> Guys, if we have two functions here, f of x and g of x, and you combine them together, if you multiply them, you don't need the chain rule because it's you have a product rule already. It's only when you combine them together as a composition, right? If you add, if you multiply them, divide them, add them, subtract them, you don't need the chain rule. It's only for when you have f of g of x, right? If you're doing a function of another function of a variable. The derivative of this would be, if you, if you think about what we have written up above there, it's the outer function, right? It's This is going to be the derivative of f. Derivative of f with respect to g multiplied by the derivative of g with respect to x, right? So it's this as a, as a derivative of that and this derivative of that. That gives you the whole overall thing. If you want to write that out with symbols, then this, this notation always seems more complicated here. This is f prime g of x. I'm leaving g of x inside there because that's the variable when you look at the outer function. Times g prime of x. It's not f prime of x times g prime of x because that would be saying this is what you're looking for, right? Okay? If you want, if you want the derivative of the whole thing, if you want this I don't know what you're going to do here other than do this, the derivative of that. <laughs> okay, the derivative of that is equal to f prime of g of x times g of x. The way that they do that in the book is instead of doing brackets like that, they say if they give another letter, they say if h equals that composition, then h prime is that. That's the chain rule written with that type of notation. If if it's written with the other notation, it looks nice and easy because you can just, I mean, it looks like ratios. It looks like you can cancel things, right? I mean, I think when I first saw this, I thought, well, that's pretty obvious. You know, you just do that. It's more than that, but and maybe if that's a way of remembering it, I don't know. If you had a composition of three functions, if you had a composition of three functions, it's going to be the same type of idea, right? If you... If you say that, I don't know, use something else here. I don't know. H of G of F of X. Okay? It's a combination of three things. Well, you could do, I know you, oh, you can't make some space there somewhere? You can write it somewhere. The derivative of this would be, B prime is, well, this is going to be ugly writing it out this way, but I don't know. Uh, it would be H prime with respect to whatever's inside there, right? G, F, X, right? And then it's going to be times G prime with whatever's inside of that function. F of X, and then it would be times... F prime of X. If you had something that said H was a function of G, H is a function of G, and G is a function of F, and F is a function of X, you'd have that the overall derivative is H D H D G D G D F D F D X. Okay? <laughs> Well, it's this one related to that one, and it's that one related to that one, and then it's how that's related to x. Right? Like, it's how h is related to g, how g is related to f, and how f is related to x. It's three things because there's a chain of three functions there. Okay? We, I have, we've, I mean, this... Realistically, you could write it in here because I've already we've already written it up above there. If you have y as a function of u, being careful with f as a function of u, and then u as a function of g, you can write down what's dy dx. Oh 
What is dy dx? Derivative y with respect to x. It's dy du times du dx. Or if you're using the other kind of notation here, you would say it's f prime with respect to u times g prime with respect to x. I think uh, it doesn't click until you put into practice actually finding. I mean, these kind of things maybe make more sense to come back and write afterwards. This I already wrote up above. See above, even though you can't see what's above. In the blue circled part. This was getting way ahead in thinking of a chain that has three functions, but... I turned it off because it was too distracting for some things. No, because it was, uh, when you went to point at things, it was on the side, it wasn't in the middle. And and then that's the high, I changed it to the highlighted thing, and that was it. Well, not really. I think you guys were more excited than I was. Okay. You thought I was going to get a dinosaur. Okay, here. so here's your first attempt at using the chain rule. If I asked you to find the derivative of this before you know the chain rule, your only choice is to do this, right? Expand it out, multiply it out, which is, which is not that difficult. If it said 3x squared plus 1 to the 20th power, that would be difficult, and you don't want to do that, okay? So I want you to do this two ways and confirm that they're the same. The same as you did before. Have a look and make sure they're the same. The chain rule, it, I, I don't want to do it for you and then have you copy it. I want you to try it. Even if you are not successful and then copy it, you're going to learn more that way. And then after that, we're going to have to move on to uh, marking the thing. But you could certainly work ahead at this 